Welcome back. You're watching Newsnight on ENCA. Now, the DG Murray Trust has launched a new project. The project is called Change Ideas, a dynamic resource for journalists, researchers and policymakers. It aims to address pertinent issues affecting South Africans. DG Murray Trust CEO Dr. David Harrison joins us now virtually for more. Good evening to you, Doctor. Thank you very much for your time. I'd like to understand the concept behind Change Ideas. Tell us a little bit more about it. Well, we firmly believe that South Africa can escape the inequality trap that it finds, finds itself in. Uh, we're in a trap where a quarter of our children uh, don't get enough food to eat, which means they don't perform well at school, which means they drop out of school and don't contribute to the economy. Uh, our skills base in the economy is too small. Um, and so we keep getting stuck in this trap. But we believe that there are very specific opportunities that can help us escape this trap. Um, if we are very deliberate, very systematic in the way that we go about it. And we felt that what's needed is to bring together information about these opportunities in a way that uh, tells journalists, uh, tells policymakers and the general public um, ways to get out of it. So, so it brings together information about what can be done, how it can be done, how it's been tried in other countries, what's been uh, done in South Africa, what it costs in a way that sort of points the way forward um, to a better future. Hmm. And then, Doctor, how then does the specific resource actually fun function? Is it a roundtable discussion? Is it uh, an event where people uh, with similar interests meet at a specific time and place? Could you give us a practical example of how it would function? Well, it's a combination of a very specific policy briefs that have been developed and we've started with a, a, a big focus on elements of early childhood development, uh, early learning, how we fill the early learning gap, um, uh, how we prevent the effects of alcohol harms in South Africa, the introduction of minimum unit prices. Uh, so, so, so this is a set of, of materials that are available to any journalist, to any uh, politician, policymaker, the public who would like uh, to gain access to that. But that's not enough. We know that. And so... And so we, uh, we work with parliamentary portfolio committees, we work with departments of um, uh, uh, government departments and the media to try and bring these documents alive. Um, and we will, over the next uh, two to three years, be expanding our town hall meetings, our web webinars, a range of opportunities uh, to enable ordinary South Africans to engage as well. Because this is not just about the political elites, it's not just about... Um, politicians in an echo chamber talking to each other. We've got to find a way to get ordinary South Africans to be part mm. of the public sphere. And so we're going to be expanding um, the number of, of, of venues and, uh, and events in which ordinary people can participate. Mm. Speaking about uh, the South African public, do you think there is a lack of education on how involved uh, an in individual can be in, in policy making and in decisions that are made that ultimately affect you as a South African citizen? How do we go about educating South Africans on how involved they actually could be? Yeah, so I, I think on the one hand, we're, we're incredibly fortunate in South Africa that we've got this very diverse and rich network of civil society organizations that are working on the ground, that are working often behind the scenes, not, uh, not in the public eye, um, but, but that are engaging with communities about, uh, about the issues. So, so, so that's a fantastic platform to build on. But I do think that there's a growing lethargy. I think there's a cynicism about what change could happen in South Africa. And so I think the average South African has stepped back um, and has said, look, um, their voice is not important. But, but we, we really believe that, that if South Africans speak up, if they help to change the narrative, if they've got clarity of what these change ideas are, we can, we can make a difference. We, we are seeing how in, in key areas uh, differences can be made. So, so I do think that this, this year is a time of renewal. It's a time of opportunity for us to recalibrate the way in which ordinary South Africans engage with politicians. And we'd really invite ordinary South Africans to step up to the plate again. Hmm. 
Doctor, one of your calls to action uh, was to see uh, various politicians come together and unite for the betterment of South Africans when it comes to issues of poverty, uh, inequality, access to education and so forth. Um, what is the plan of action and what type of collaboration are you hoping to see here? I read and I noticed that there was a panel discussion with various leaders uh, from uh, numerous political parties including the DA, the ANC, Rizam Zanzi, uh, the FF Plus uh, and Action SA as well. What were those dialogues and conversations like? Well, you know, we challenged the, the politicians and we we're really grateful that they came to the table. But we challenged them because, because we, we, we have this strange paradox. Um, we know from the science and from the evidence that the way in which we can change society is by investment in children. I mean, imagine if every one of the 2,800 children born today had enough food, early learning, love, stimulation as they grew up. Um, we would change our society fundamentally in the next 20 years. That's the type of radical thinking that's required. And yet when you have a look at the election manifestos, um, many of them are totally silent about children. Um, very few of them actually engage in critical issue, issues like nutrition. So, so it, it, it was a useful and robust in, a, engagement where, where they told us what, the, what they were doing. But we also wanted to put a children firmly in the eye of of the politicians and on their political agendas. Hmm. Doctor, we, we remember the National Development Plan 2030 being launched back uh, in 2013 that outlined uh, a number of structures that uh, we are hoping to achieve over uh, the next couple of years. Uh, how far are we from achieving those things and what needs to actively change for us to make progress and move forward? We often have these kind of conversations. We often speak to change makers and policy makers and politicians and everyday South Africans and it's all good and well to talk but there needs to be action after that talk. Um, how do we navigate uh, these sort of uh, environments to make sure that it's, it doesn't end with us just having these sort of conversations, but there's active change. And also, we need to also elaborate on everyday South Africans' uh, role and responsibility in embarking on this change as well. Well, I think, I think the National Development Plan said two critical things that never happened. The one I've spoken about, and that is to put uh, children at the center of, of development in, in, in South Africa. We have to start doing that. We've let Madiba's children down. We can't let his grand, uh, grandchildren down. And so, so understanding and making the investment case, understanding the economic power of, 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 of children if we, can, uh, if we can enable them to grow up differently. So that's the one element. But the second important point that the National Development Plan said is that, is that government can't do this alone. Mm -hmm. um, that the expertise in South Africa is spread across the private sector, civil society, trade unions, uh, and government. And so we've got to formulate different sort of public-private partnerships than we have in the past. It's not a case of just telling government or expecting government to do everything. But government clearly has a constitutional mandate to ensure delivery. But that doesn't mean they have to do it alone. And so, so I think that um, some of what we've seen, for example, with the... Um, the public-private partnerships that have arisen through the National uh, Energy Crisis uh, Committee that's been set up, or the Logistics Committee that's been set up, uh, relationships uh, between government and private sector in a different way. Some of the work that we're doing at the presidency on, um, on changing the paradigm for children um, opens the opportunity for working together in a way that hasn't been done in the past. And I believe that this, in, in the context of such fiscal constraint, I believe that unlocking value through partnership is probably our best bet. Just in conclusion, Doctor, how does one go about accessing this specific resource quickly? On our website, www.dgmt.co.za, and just look for the publications or the resources, and they're there. Fantastic. Doctor, thank you very much uh, for your time, sharing your insights. That was Dr. David Harrison from the DG Murray Trust. They've launched a resource called Change Ideas. It is a resource to advocate for better public policies and also to get us ordinary and everyday South Africans more involved uh, when it comes to policy and policy making.